Microsoft creates a massive electronic waste problem with Windows 10 end of support. On October 14, 2025, Windows 10 loses all support, including but not limited to warranty and technical support, security patches and bug fixes, and overall improvements to the operating system, so while Windows 10 will continue to work after it goes end of life. It will no longer be a feasible operating system due to the significant amount of serious unpatched flaws that could be exploited at any given time, so from that date onward, many businesses may have to consider disposing of their computers, as the hardware is incompatible with Windows 11 and later, so their only choice is to either ship that computer off to a country like India, where it will then be destroyed and crushed, and the various different materials, metals and golds, will get extracted out of the hardware, and this is why electronic waste is really really bad, this does a lot of destructive work to our environment, and if this does not sound bad enough, you want to know the estimated number of PCs that could end up in landfill? Around 250 million PCs worldwide could go to landfill, but do remember this is just an estimate and the actual amount of PCs going into landfill would likely be more than 250 million, probably more like 400 million, nearly all of the world runs Windows 10, more than half of every country still runs it, except for places like Armenia, where the majority of PCs still run Windows XP. Microsoft has announced that Windows 10 will see an extended support program, however, it is not going to come for free or without any strings attached, if the end user wishes to receive three more years of essential fixes and security updates, you will have to pay for it, and over the course of three years, that price doubles, so I assume many of you will not want to pay to receive the extended support, in fact, because of this, many will try to find ways of being able to get it for free, as we have seen with Windows 7. A channel called Adventures in Nostalgia actually makes videos like this, where he will show you how to get extended security updates for unsupported operating systems, most usually Windows, however, this requires you to edit the registry in Windows, which can be a huge risk to take if you do not know what you are doing, changing registry files can corrupt or damage your system, so please do it at your own risk, and preferably. Please do not use registry editor unless you know what you're doing with it. An estimated 400 million PCs run Windows 11, but that number is also an estimate. This equates to around one quarter of the entire world running Windows 11, while the remaining three or so quarters is Windows 10, 7, 8.1, XP, and then you also have the other operating systems in the market share as well, such as Mac OS, Linux. Android, iOS, etc. So, considering that many PCs could go to landfill, you may have some options. If you're a home user who does not rely on proprietary software, you could seek an alternative operating system, such as Linux, which is free, open source, and is renowned for stability, security, and great revival of older hardware, and many report that when they switch to Linux, it often performs better on their existing hardware, however, Linux is really a niche market, only so many people will be interested in using it, learning about it, and so on and so forth, the majority rely on Windows for their day-to-day -day tasks, which is why you cannot convince most people to switch to Linux, you cannot even convince them to try it, so stop saying that Linux will get a year of the desktop, it will not. That's sad to say but it's reality, and reality does not care about your so-called facts, and facts do not care about your opinions, so anyone who thinks Linux will become super when Windows 10 goes end of life is a bit of an idiot, no offense, you lack the understanding that not everyone is prepared for change, and the big reasons why people will not move to Linux is because the majority of the programs they use is not compatible with Linux or even Mac OS, so migrating to another OS can be a hit or a miss, and for most people, it's too much to ask them to install an operating system, most people use whatever comes on their device, only us enthusiasts, geeks, nerds, etc., will try alternative systems, if we're not using them already, 
and the people who use Linux usually have lots of technical skill, though not every Linux user can write scripts or do coding, if you think about ones who use Ubuntu and Mint, they're less tech savvy than the ones who use Arch, although this is really a case by case thing, so that statement is not 100% true, although I do imagine that the beginners or newcomers to Linux are not tech savvy by any means, but they are willing to learn something new. If you do want to switch to Linux, there are many great guides online you can look at to help you understand the process of migrating to Linux, and the beginner friendly options make Linux more accessible to the general public, so if you are interested in using Linux, or replacing your current OS with a Linux distro, check out Linux Mint, my personal favorite Linux distro, and by far the most recommended for Windows users, Linux Mint is easy to set up use, and configure, it looks and feels similar to Windows, managing your drivers and hardware is easy and usually effortless in Linux, you generally never need to change something or update your drivers in Linux unless it's not working correctly, or you have an outdated driver, so maintaining Linux is usually less time consuming than maintaining a Windows system, you have complete control over updates, installed software, and there is no tracking or telemetry in Linux Mint, so if privacy is of your concern, you should consider using a tracking free. Telemetry free OS such as Linux Mint, and most other distros also do not collect, store, or send personal data to anyone, including third parties, and for many reasons, Linux Mint has to be the best beginner friendly distro, so if you're willing to use Linux, I say give it a shot and see how much you like it. If you do not like it, you don't have to stay with it, you can get your preferred OS back onto your PC or laptop, or you can set up Linux alongside your existing system, or use Linux on a separate, non-mission critical computer, that you are happy to use and do not care about if it breaks or stops working, you would also want to do this because a dual boot, and even a dual drive boot, can ruin your system without too much effort, literally. Windows updates overwrite the master boot record and can stop you accessing your Linux system, Windows updates can corrupt the bootloader as well, preventing access to both operating systems, so to save yourself any major hassle, perhaps invest in an old PC or laptop, you could also go for a mini PC, or a Raspberry Pi, which is a Linux computer that has seen lots of success over the years. If Linux is not a viable option for you, you may have to stick with Windows 10, but you will have to practice safe security measures, and be super careful when browsing the web online, if your browser and other software is up to date, you should be ok to use Windows 10 past its end of support, but this is still not advisable because the system itself is a sitting duck, so no matter how secure software is, if a system is compromised, it's no use to you and if you do use Windows 10 after it goes end of life, you should plan on installing and using a reputable antivirus solution, you can pay for premium ones if you wish to receive advanced protection and more features, but antivirus will not stop zero day exploits, ransomware, and other nasties that can go undetected even during a full system scan, don't forget about root kits, keyloggers, adware, and all this other sort of malware, and by 2025, malware will have probably advanced a lot more, so that means that many billions of machines will be left vulnerable because they cannot be upgraded, either due to costs, compatibility reassertions, or both, Windows licenses are very expensive, but businesses have to have legal copies of it, otherwise, they could be technically considered stealing from another business, Microsoft is a business, like any other business, so they have to make their money somehow, and this is how they do it, but a large percentage of Microsoft's revenue is not from Windows, it's from other Microsoft products such as Office 365, Xbox Live, and other products which are owned by Microsoft, but Windows does make Microsoft lots of money, since everyone basically is forced to use it, because their hardware, software, and other stuff may only work with Windows and not Linux or other systems. Another option would be to continue using Windows 10 but never use it online, 
this will help ensure you have a minimal risk of becoming infected, and if you want software for that machine, you will have to download it using an up-to-date operating system. Finally, you can run Windows 10 inside a virtual machine, using something like VirtualBox or VMware, however, running Windows 10 in a virtual machine may not be a pleasant experience, depending on your specific hardware specifications, and your PC must meet hardware virtualization requirements, in other words, it must be able to run hardware virtualization, some operating systems will not run in a VM if this option is not accessible, or is disabled, or your PC does not have the appropriate hardware virtualization support, but most PCs from about 2010 onwards should have hardware virtualization support, and running Windows inside of Linux can be a great way to retain access to a set number of programs, although your PC also needs an SSD for better performance, more RAM is always better, and a powerful CPU will help as well, so if you have all of these things, you should be able to run Windows 10 under a virtualization tool with no issues, but from my personal experience, Windows 10 inside a virtual machine is very slow, even when you give it more RAM and CPU cores, it still runs slow, compare that to Windows 8.1, it runs really well, even inside a virtual machine. Microsoft should seriously consider this as an unacceptable problem because when a problem is so big it affects our environment, we shall not accept it, and you can tell people to switch to Linux till the cows come home, and you're gonna have to accept that Linux is not for everyone, in fact, it's the worst operating system to recommend for many reasons, funny that, considering I am a Linux enthusiast, you would not expect to hear such things, but Linux is incompatible with far too many programs. Some hardware is also not compatible with Linux, generally though, this is really new hardware which has not yet had its vendor release drivers for Linux, Linux is not a priority for developers because so few people use it on desktops, so hardware support is often inferior on Linux due to this, although most distros work really well on just about anything you throw them on, however, too many people rely on Windows only programs. So for those who cannot use Linux, it's probably best to start planning ahead a future purchase of a PC, I know that might sound crazy, but seriously, start looking around and see what fits your budget, you can buy a plenty powerful mini PC for not too much money, at least a couple hundred dollars to get something of decency, but refurbished or pre-owned PCs can be cheap too, although an old PC is like an old car it's generally going to need parts replaced throughout the time you have it, and some things are harder to replace than others, be sure to carefully read sellers descriptions to make sure they're not scamming you or anything, some refurbished PCs can sell for abnormally cheap prices, this can be a potential red flag that the computer is faulty or has not been properly refurbished, and usually, you will have to replace the hard drive, if the PC uses a hard drive, if it uses an SSD, that's worthy of replacement too, although you would have no idea how much use any of the parts have had, and if upgrading to Windows 11 seems like a better choice, you better start saving for compatible hardware, so you can hopefully stay safe in this online world. Alrighty, that's it for this video folks. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. See you next video. Bye for now.